It's Adam here for PC Monitors and today I'm going to be taking a look at the OSD on-screen display menu system of this massive screen here, the Philips BDM4350UC. The OSD is controlled by a joystick which is found at the rear of the monitor towards the right if you're viewing it from the front. Let's see if I can show you that. It's uh, just there. And it is quite a stretch to actually use it. Um, I'm at a very strange angle on my chair here and I probably should have got some kind assistant to do the video whilst I go through the menu system or vice versa. So I'm sorry about the weird angles that I'm going to have in this video but I'll just do the best I can on my own here. If you twiddle that joystick to the right, um, sorry, if you twiddle it to the left you can see the smart image presets which are explored in the review. The most interesting one of those is probably Smart Uniformity, which is a uniformity compensation mode, which, as I explored in the review, didn't actually improve things on my monitor. It uh, actually made things significantly worse. Um, to be honest, I prefer just having Smart um, Image off. I like to tweak things manually, so I prefer that. If you twiddle the joystick up, you have this multi-view, picture-in-picture-in-picture-by-picture and picture and picture picture settings, which I'll talk about in um, a little more when I go into the main menu system. If you twiddle the joystick to the right, you get the main menu system. And if you twiddle it down, there's audio source. That can actually be customised to something else that I'll come on to. Now this is when the real struggle starts, having to try and go through the entire menu system whilst stretching over my desk like this. I should also mention that actually the, the joystick itself is quite intuitive, it's just that the monitor is so big um, and the, the position of it's um, not exactly ideal on such a large monitor. It would be nicer if it was sort of in the middle here or something, but uh, it makes it a bit, bit of a stretch to use it. The main menu has various different sections. First off there's input, which allows you to select the input used by the monitor. There's picture, there's something here, picture format, which allows you to select how, primarily how non-native resolutions are displayed on the monitor. So you can have them in a 4 by 3 aspect ratio, 1 to 1 pixel mapping, um, or widescreen. And I'll just actually quickly fire up the full HD resolution. Um, I'm actually using an AMD graphics card at the moment, so I believe that no matter what I set in the AMD Radeon settings, the graphics card's actually going to take over the scaling, so I actually can't show you this without firing up a game, so I'm not actually going to bother with that because it's just going to take too much time, but essentially that if I was running full HD um, and I selected one-to-one, -one, there'd be a big black border around the screen and it would only have 1,900 and... Uh, 20 by 1080 pixels on the screen lit up. Whereas widescreen would fill the entire screen with the resolution and use interpolation. There's the usual brightness and contrast controls. There's a sharpness control as well, which you can adjust in increments of 10. There's a smart response pixel overdrive setting. Which, as I mentioned in the review, I like to set to fast. You can also set to faster or fastest if you don't mind a fair bit of inverse ghosting or overshoot, or you can set it to off if you prefer. A smart contrast, dynamic contrast feature of the monitor, which is also explored in the review. Uh, a gamma setting, which you can set to anything between 1.8 and 2.6 in increments of 0.2. And for me, the default 2.2 works the best. Pixel orbiting feature. This is designed to prevent burn-in of the, the monitor. or um, It's not exactly burn-in because it's usually temporary, so image retention is, is a better term for it. And the, the monitor actually gives you a little warning about this when you first turn it on. It's standard for Philips monitor to give that sort of warning. Um, I haven't actually had an a problem with image retention myself on this monitor. I've used it for a couple of weeks now, done a variety of things like browsing the internet, word processing, Excel, that kind of thing, gaming, movies, and I haven't noticed any 
problem of image retention. But the pixel orbiting feature is supposed to reduce the chance of uh, that happening, or at least happening in a severe way. And all that does is every now and then it'll nudge the image over by one pixel or a couple of pixels and then back into position. So you can just see this kind of slight juddering of the image. It's really, um, I don't know how often it happens. Uh, it, I don't really notice it at all, to be honest. I definitely don't notice it when I'm gaming or watching a movie. Um, and it's it's basically just something that happens for a split second every um, possibly even 10, 15 minutes. I'm not sure. But it's, 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 I just leave that setting on, basically. Overscan, which applies if you're using um, an older device such as a games console or something which uses that kind of setting. It's greyed out for me on my PC here. There is PIP, picture in picture and picture by picture. And I can't go through these in much detail because I've only got a single device connected, my PC connected to the monitor at the moment. But it actually has four way um, picture by picture. So you can have four different sources connected and you could have um, simultaneous display of those sources on the screen at the same time, which is which can be quite useful. There's also picture in picture, and you can set where the picture is displayed on the screen for the uh, PIP source. And you can have a small box, a big box, I think probably a medium box, I'm not sure. Um, so it's quite a lot of flexibility with the PIP, P by P there. Audio, you can set the volume of the integrated speakers. You can set, set uh, them to standalone mode, um, or possibly that uses the 3.5mm jack, I'm not sure. I'm sure I, I come across this every time I review Philips monitors and I still haven't worked out or remembered exactly what that setting does. Um, you can mute the integrated speakers or anything connected to the 3.5mm jack, and you control the source used for the audio. I should also mention that the Speakers on this monitor are 7 watt stereo speakers to 7 watt speakers. They're quite powerful. Um, you can see I've actually got the volume set to 10. When I was testing these speakers, I actually found that a fairly decent volume. They can go very loud indeed. Um, they've got a decent bassiness to them. Uh, so, I mean, they're not amazing. You know, audiophiles will not find them incredible, but they're, they're pretty decent for integrated monitor speakers anyway. There's a color menu. That allows you to adjust the color temperature, the various predefined values, 5000K, which is basically a low blue light setting, 6500K, which is a factory default, or you can make it very cool looking, or um, and by that I mean very blue biased, by selecting a higher color temperature there. But I, I do like having a kind of low blue light setting, 5000K for the evening. sRGB, um, that's actually identical to 6500K if you've got um, smart image off. So the factory default settings at sRGB, color temperature 6500K, exactly the same. User define, by default on my unit that gave an extremely cool tint to the image, but if I want to achieve 6500K according to my colorimeter, I do have to make manual adjustments. You can see the the, the default actually 100 as the red channel's on. And I've had to adjust the blue significantly and the green a fair whack as well on my unit. I can change the language that the OSD is displayed in. Various OSD settings you can change, such as where it's displayed on the screen horizontally and vertically. You can also en enable a transparency effect if you want to, to various different levels can change how long the OSD is displayed on the screen before the last button press. Uh, sorry, after the last button press. Uh, I'm not sure how practical five seconds would be. That You'd have to be very quick with this uh, menu system if you want five seconds, but um, I've got it set to 60 for this video. There's a user key. As I mentioned before, If you, I think if you press down on the OSD before entering the main menu system, it gave you the audio source, you can have that so it adjusts the volume or adjusts the input. It would have been nice to have some extra options there such as a brightness adjustment or something like that, so it's a bit limited the things you can actually adjust there. So now if I press down on the OSD you can see it brings up this volume slider there.
and finally there is setup and that has various options which are greyed out because they only apply to VGA or analog connections Resolution notification, so that will remind you that the optimal resolution is uh, 3840 by 2160 if you're running a different resolution, or possibly if you're running a different refresh rate as well. You can change the DisplayPort revision used for compatibility purposes. This is set to 1.1 by default. That limits you to 30 hertz at the native resolution. You have to change this to 1.2 to be able to use 60 hertz at the native resolution. Same with MHL HDMI, that's set to 1.4, which would be limited to 30 hertz at the native resolution or 60 hertz at full HD, that kind of resolution. Or you can use HDMI 2.0 for the full 60 hertz at the native resolution. There's also an option to reset everything to the factory defaults. And finally, a little information section, which just gives you a little shorthand designation of the monitor, BDM4350, serial number, and the current resolution and refresh rate. So that's all there is to it. That was the OSD on screen display menu system with the Philips BDM 4350UC. Be sure to check out the full review on PCMonitors.info and I've also got a video up on my YouTube channel, sort of summary review if you prefer to watch that as well.